Hi friends, this is Joan at 10 Pentacles Tarot. Welcome to my review of the Woodland Wardens Oracle Deck and Guidebook by Jessica Rue. Now, this Oracle Deck has 52 cards and I'd like to show you the book box first of all. It's a it's a regular two-piece box and the back says Inspired by history, folklore, and mythology, artist Jessica Rue's debut oracle deck transports seekers to another time and place, offering insight rooted in the magic of flora and fauna. And it's published by Andrews McNeil Publishing Company. So, I found this. This is a new 2022 deck, and I'm pretty excited about it. The artwork is just beautiful. All right, so there's the box. Inside is a lovely pattern inside the box, of course. And here is the guidebook. Now, this is a paperback guidebook, and it is um, a very nicely illustrated Woodland Wardens. Um, here is the contents. It lists the cards at 0 through 52, and it gives you good practice with your Roman numerals because they're all... Um, numbered with Roman numerals. So here's the introduction, the beautiful illustrations by Jessica Rue. Um, here is her um, description of how this deck came into being. I always like to read those because it makes me feel, it makes me feel like I know the creator a little bit. How to use the cards in the guidebook. And um, I found this interesting part here, and it says, Some readers may prefer to avoid the guidebook altogether or to use it only sparingly. I've designed the cards such that their color, texture, and layout offer clues to their meaning as well. For example, you may notice that cards with lighter backgrounds tend to be related to creativity and action, while darker cards point to more introspective themes. Perhaps you note key differences between warm and cool colored cards, or you draw connections based on positions. Is the plant element framing or encircling the animal element? Does the animal appear to be in motion or is it still? These visual clues may aid you in your readings and help you to recognize patterns. All right, and so on. And that's uh, very helpful and interesting as well. Here we have suggested spreads. This is very, very well done. Uh, with the illustrations, uh, one card pool, past, present, future, here's some others, and then it begins with um, the meanings of the cards. So, for example, the mouse, um, I'll just read you this one, it says, like the fool in a tarot deck, the mouse and buttercup is numbered zero. Both cards mark the start of a journey and both remind us that we have much to learn. Mice are grounded and innocent, yet anyone who has dealt with a mouse in their house knows they're determined and highly adaptable. The mouse is paired with the humble buttercup, a symbol of childhood innocence. Have you ever held a buttercup under your chin? According to a, nature, a centuries old children's game, if the reflection of the flower glows yellow on your skin, it reveals that you like butter. So the upright meaning, you may be embarking on a journey or starting down a new path. Remember that innocence and a lack of understanding are not negative qualities. Instead, they remind us of our capacity for growth, adaptability, and learning. And the reverse meaning is, you may be unprepared for what you undertake. Consider how you might adapt and learn to better lay the groundwork for future endeavors. And then, a couple of questions you might ask yourself. What do I hope to learn on this new path? And what potential dangers should I look out for? So, we continue on with the book. Um, there's a picture for each one and an upright and reverse meaning, as well as some questions to ask yourself. And let's see, at the end, we have acknowledgments. There's a picture of Jessica and that's it. It's a very nice size guidebook, lots of good information. And, uh, that's that. All right. Let's look at the cards. All right. In the inside of the box, it says, Jessica Rue is a Nashville-based freelance illustrator and the author of Floriography, an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers. She loves exploring in her own backyard and being surrounded by an abundance of nature. Using subdued colors and rhythmic shapes, she renders flora, fauna, and much more in a richly detailed old world style. A seasoned reader of tarot, she loves to include hidden symbolism inspired by the Rider-Waite-Smith deck.
in her illustrations. All right, so this is what the back of the deck looks like. Pretty pretty, neutral colors. Um, the cards are matte finish, uh, matte finish, and they are pretty pretty thick. So let's look at the cards. All right. So first is uh, zero, the mouse and the buttercup. Number one, the cat and lavender, which is independence. Number two, the spider and the passion flower, which is creative ingenuity. Number three, the hair and the oak, new opportunities. Number four, the bear and cedar, leadership. Number five, the sheep and blackberry, devotion. Number six, the frog and lotus, metamorphosis. Number seven, the chipmunk and laurel for success. Number eight, the elk and ash for strength. Number nine, the weasel and pine for introspection. Number 10, the duck and chrysanthemum for luck. Number 11, the goat, sorry, the goat and the willow for overcoming obstacles. Number 12, the lizard and pitcher plant for stagnation. Number 13, the moth and eucalyptus and ending. Number 14, the vulture and asphodel upheaval. I'm guessing that's my favorite, the tower card. Um, the deer and oat for healing. The crow and dogwood for intelligence. The salamander and black pepper for inspiration. The boar and pumpkin for confidence. Number 19, the bat and hellebore for intuition. Number 20, the caiman and poppy for dreams. Number 21, the skunk and magnolia protection. Number 22, the owl and hop for wisdom. Number 23, I think this is my favorite, the hound and pear for loyalty. Number 24, the Martin and Foxglove for Mischief. Number 25, oops. Um, the Wolf and Rosehip for Guardianship. The Bee and Pomegranate for Productivity. The Fox and Ivy for Adaptability. The Possum and Peony for Bashfulness. The squirrel and chestnut for preparation. If that makes sense. The beaver and birch for home. Number 31, the turtle and coriander for satisfaction. Number 32, the badger and ginkgo for healing wounds. The raccoon and sycamore for curiosity. The snake and the fern for starting over. The ladybug and the sweet pea for happiness. Number 36, the finch and peach for romance. Number 37, the Coyote and Datura for Deceit. Number 38, the Porcupine and Anemone for Boundaries. The Otter and the Cattail for Peace. The Bobcat and the Blackthorn for Patience. The snail and the huckleberry 
for trust in the invisible. The eel and the iris for safety. The trout and the lily of the valley for purification. The hawk and the thistle for graceful persistence. Number forty five. Sorry, my Roman numeral <laughs> memory eludes me. Yes, forty five. The antelope and wheat for nourishment. Forty six. The butterfly and snowdrop for hope. Forty seven. The rooster. Oops. Whoa. Rooster and Sunflower for Communication. The Dragonfly and Pansy for Balance. Uh, the Horse and Bluebell for Modest Fortitude. Isn't that beautiful? The Ram and Dahlia for Determination. And last but not least, the Quail and Gooseberry for Anticipation. All right. Beautiful, beautiful deck. Let's see how they shuffle. Oh, yeah. They shuffle very, very nice. Smooth. Nice and smooth. All right. Let's see if we can do the Vegas shuffle. I'm not trusting myself to do this correctly, but let's give it a go. Okay. Oh, yeah. These are nice and bendy. Look, even I can do that. Wow, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> Not really. I'm impressed with this deck. This is very, very nice and easy to shuffle. Very flexible. Flexible, but not cheaply made. It doesn't seem like it would uh, be easily ruined or destroyed in any way. All right, so nice. All right, so let's see what our card for the day is, folks. Let's just pull one randomly. There it is. And our card for the day is the Fox and Ivy Reversed, number 27. Let's find that one. Well, oh, here we go, 20. There we go. The Fox and the Ivy Reversed. Adaptability. Foxes are cunning, quick thinking, and clever. When paired with ivy, a hardy plant that flourishes even in harsh environments, the fox reminds us to apply our cleverness toward adaptability. And when reversed, it means your stubbornness may be holding you back. Remain open-minded and beware of becoming stuck in our ways. Ask yourself, do I feel stuck? And how can I adapt to changes in my life? All right, that's something to think about. So, I hope you enjoyed this review, this deck review. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you soon with another Oracle deck. Let me know if you would like me to do more Oracle deck reviews. Um, for some reason, I'm just seeing this Dragonfly and Pansy for the first time. I'm sure I went through it before, but I don't remember it. It's beautiful. Anyway. Like and subscribe if you'd like me to do more Oracle Deck reviews. Please let me know in the comments. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.